بلادنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع سنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلوات الله والسلام عليه وشر الأمور وحدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا صديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم طلب العلم فريدة على كل مسلم مسلم ومسلمة أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم We begin by praising Allah We seek refuge in our Lord Most High From the weaknesses and the darknesses of our souls That which we've committed of sins And that which still lurks within us as potential and desire Whomsoever Allah guides, no one will misguide And whomsoever He leads to be led astray No one will find He will never find an ally to guide him aright And then we further testify collectively And Allah ilaha illallah That there is no God but Allah Alone and without partner to whom all power, praise, and dominion is due, and to whom we shall all be returned. And we further testify that Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, may the peace and blessings of Allah most high be upon him and his family, is the messenger of Allah. May Allah shower his copious prayers and peace upon the noble messenger, his purified family, and his righteous companions. To proceed, the best of speech is the book of Allah, and the best of guidance is the guidance of our Nabi, وسلم, namely his sunnah, his way, his teaching. And the worst of affairs in our religion are newly invented affairs. Each one of these newly invented affairs being placed in it, but not of it. And we seek refuge. Each one of, each one of these things will find itself in the, in the fires, practitioners and, and the call. And we seek refuge in Allah for such a wicked end. After seeking refuge in Allah, Most High, we begin in the name uh, from the accursed devil. We begin in the name of Allah, Most Merciful, in this life and the next. Allah Most High, He states, O mankind, Children of Adam have taqwa of your Lord. Be aware of your Lord who created you from a single soul, split the soul into male and female, and spread there upon the earth many men and women. And have taqwa of Allah by whose name and whose right you seek your mutual rights amongst yourselves. And do not cut the ties of the womb, i.e. that of blood or of uh, family, kinship, because Allah is ever watchful over you. O you who believe on taqwa of Allah, fear Allah as you deserve to be feared, and do not die except as Muslim. And what that means is to be submitting to his command as best as you can. O you who believe, have taqwa of Allah and speak a true word. It may be that Allah will forgive for you your sins and rectify for you your state of affairs. And whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger, he's already achieved the greatest success. I, I racked my mind because uh, I very rarely give khutbahs here. I'm on the last uh, of the schedule of what to give as a khutbah. And what initially I wanted to do about new beginnings and all this kind of stuff, right? Our new year actually starts in Muharram after Ramadan, right? the, the month after Ramadan. And then I came across a statement of the Prophet alayhi salatu uh, the, the It's unusual, it seems to be like a speech of his, right? And it's recorded uh, by Abu Naim in his Khaliyat al-Awliya, like the, uh, the adornments of the saints. And it's also collected in a book called A Compendium on the Virtues of Knowledge by the Maghribi scholar, Ibn al May Allah have mercy upon them both. But I wanted to start the, the khutbah, uh, the khutbah topics with the Prophet's advice with regarding knowledge. The last thing that I mentioned in the Arabic before I started translating was the Prophet ﷺ mentioned, and it's unusual in the construction. Seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim, male and female. Now when Allah says, oh you who believe, it's in the male construction because that's just the standard, that's the standard in Arabic. We don't say now like, that Allah is male or the angels are male. No, they put in that form, but it's beyond obviously Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond gender. And the angels as we know are genderless, they don't have children. They're created by Allah in their status. Right? 
But here, so when Allah says, oh, you should pray, and he's addressing the males, the females are included. But here, there's a great wisdom here. The Prophet Muhammad specified Muslim male and female. Right? Now, if we have a look at the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah ordered us to do something. Have taqwa of him, meaning live a good life, but then when you die, die as a Muslim. Now, being Muslim, what's the end? We all know this. The Shahada has entered into this. And the first condition of the Shahada is what? It's seeking knowledge. Right? Or having knowledge of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us something. Fa'alam, this is Surah Muhammad, alayhi salatu salam. Right? Fa'alam annahu la ilaha illallah. Thumma astaghfir li zambi. Fulil mu'mini wa fulil mu'mina. No. It's fi'al amr, right? For those Arabs, the brothers who are, mashallah, more knowledgeable, they don't look at them. Many of us here, they'll know. It's fi'al amr. Allah commands us. You tell someone that, and you say to your child, Isma, do it now, right? It's a commandment. Know that there's no God but Allah, then seek refuge in Allah and ask Allah's forgiveness for your sins and for the believing men and women. There's two points of benefit for what the, uh, for that, that I want to mention. The first thing is Shaykh Islam ibn Sabir, rahimahullah, he mentioned something amazing. He said, look, within this is a comprehensive solution to man's problems. Because saying La ilaha illallah erases the biggest sin. It removes the biggest problem, the biggest impediment to Allah, which is shirk. It's the asl. Yeah? The asl. And then the nafara is the other roots of sin and other things that come out, then you ask Allah to forgive you. Meaning, if you don't understand your shahada properly, the other things, they cannot be forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ was reported to Mu'adh ibn Jabal, also another scholar, who's a Christian before, who's a, a knowledgeable Christian, who entered into Islam from the Yemen. He mentioned something, he said, I heard the Messenger Sallallahu say in the following, and it seems very much like it's an advice or a khutbah, so I want you put, to put yourself in that mindset, that we were amongst the Sahaba, right? And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is addressing us. Imagine how they took the word, they memorized every single word, and they gave it to us. Atabul'im, learn knowledge. For learning it is a type of khashya, a fear or awe or reverence of your Lord. So in the act of learning knowledge is a reverence to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala. Seeking for it, looking for it, is an act of worship. So for example, let us consider, each one of the brothers here, some of us came from far, some of us came from close, and sisters, right? They travel. Now we know, even just traveling to the masjid, every step that you take, a sin is uh, removed, and a good deed is written. If you're traveling on your cars, or nowadays cars and stuff like that, your journey will be counted as well. It's not just the coming here, it's the intention of going as well. As we know, anyone who goes out in search of knowledge, it's a sacred journey, it's not just the reaching of the destination, then going all of the way, it's all of worship written as goodness, right? Everything. They're stopping, they're resting, everything is written as an act of worship. Studying it is a type of tasbih. It's raising Allah's name most high. Why? Because you get closer to Him. Know this. When someone falls in love with something, what do they want to do? They want to know everything about it. They want to keep it in their thoughts all the time. Now, if we claim and we have that desire of being Muslim, how can we submit to someone, our Creator, I mean, yeah? And we don't know Him. The more we know him, the more we'll desire to go close to him, right? So this is some advice there. It's a raising of glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah takes it as a tasbih, where people gain the sacred knowledge. Searching for it is a jihad. It's an effort, right? And teaching it to those who don't know is sadaqah. Now think about this. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you mentioned the point. There's no jealousy upon a person. not allowed to be jealous of a person in which you have what they have, right? Now there's a difference, there's ghidda, where you see the three types of things, I need to explain this, right? There's a thing where you see what the person has, and you wish, oh Allah, I could have an equal amount of it too. You bless, you bless them for it, but you want it too. So if you see someone, he's good in his Arabic, or he's good in Quran, you want to be good in Quran too. This is good, that's fine. Okay? And it's allowed in two things. A person who has knowledge or wisdom, and he spreads it amongst the people, or a person who's blessed with wealth, and he spends it in the way of Allah. Not in his own personal deeds, but can have, as long as you're doing a halal, you can do that, no problem. Buy a nice house, nice, nice car, no problem, right? But the point is, it is spending or it's virtuous spending in charity that is to be desired to be emulated. But with knowledge, it's greater still, right? Someone could be blessed with that knowledge that he's teaching the people, he's guiding the people. That desire to have what that person has is a knowledgeable thing. So that's the thing that's fine and virtuous. Then there is jealousy, right? Where you don't want that person to have it. Whether you have it or not, right? You want to take it off that person. That's where you... Uh, Call it Lala to that language, right? We have, you have that desire to take what they have, or oh, they've got that nice car on it, right? That's sinful. But the worst of it is hasad, right? Which is envy. Now, the Prophet is mentioned in Muslim, he said that hasad, يَحْتَرِفُ الْحَسَنَاتِ كَمَا يَحْتَرِفُ الْحَسْبَ النَّارِ, right? That the 
the envy destroys or burns up your good deeds like fire wood is burnt by uh, uh, wood is burnt by fire, which is where you don't necessarily want them to have that. It's like someone's got a nice car, beautiful wife, whatever the things that you design in your life, right? Or someone's knowledgeable, they teach the people, it's science, I mean, you just don't want it to have it. That's rank evil. That's rank evil. That's a sign of the disease of sick heart. So we see there's levels there. So desiring what they have while not harming the person is what we should stop at. So, teaching it to those who do not know it is a charity, and delivering it to those worthy of it is an act of muqarabah, meaning going closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So can you draw close to Allah with knowledge? One of the best ahsan. And in fact, it's well known that the virtue of seeking knowledge is above the virtue of ibadah, but know that Allah will give none of his slaves knowledge until that they can, knowledge that's worthy of being kept, right? Because knowledge can be harmful for you as well, right? Except that you draw close to him with ibadah. The door of knowledge is opened by ibadah. If you're sincere and you worship Allah with uh, sincerity, with effort, Allah will open knowledge up to you. And that is through action. So my proof of this is the call of Isa, um, it's one of the most amazing statements. The Prophet Isa is reported to have said in our, uh, in, in our tradition, مَنْ عَمِلَ بِمَا عَلِمَ رَفَعَ اللَّهُ عَلْمًا مَا لَمْ يَعْلَمَ وَكُمَا قَالَ He said, whoever acts upon what he knows, Allah himself will raise him to new states of knowledge that he didn't know before. So the secret is, if you knew something and it's of virtue, there's two ways you can benefit from it. Teach the people, act upon it yourself. If you don't act upon it yourself, it becomes a proof against you. We know this is a scary narration when the Prophet said, Rabbama, is it possible that there's someone who's reciting the Quran and the Quran is cursing him? Meaning, imagine if you're reciting Subhanallah, imagine you treat the people badly and Allah and you're reciting verses of good character. It's a proof against yourself. It's not to say, oh, don't recite. Rectify yourself and make it step five. Allah doesn't expect perfection. No one here is sinless. No, we're all human beings that came in here. SubhanAllah, the status is such, if you read the Qur'an, when Allah as a test said that to angels, maybe they had a poor opinion of humanity, made them humans, within a day they fell into all of the sins. Can you imagine if someone was put into the body of a man, right, having no control, before he was an angel, having no concept of what it means to have desire, how would he be able to control himself, right? So these things, it's not that you're going to fall, it's how you treat Allah, how you come towards Allah when you've fallen, right? With humility. Knowledge is the reference guide to the allowed and the disallowed, the halal and the haram. How can you stay away from sin if you don't know what it is, right? It is a light on the path for Ahlul Jannah. If you need to get to paradise, think about this, right? Each one of us, if we're driving somewhere, the habit, even though I know the route, I put in the sat -nav. Why? To guide me. It gives me direction. What does knowledge do? It gives us direction. It's one of those corny things you'll find on the back of... Uh, uh, car, uh, car bumper stickers, but the road to paradise is very simple, and it's actually, this is very similar to hadith, right? Which is what? Turn straight, turn right, and go straight. That's it. That's the knowledge, that is the gate to paradise. That's the way, isn't it? Turn towards righteousness and stay on it. The Prophet ﷺ was asked about giving some advice, yeah? and then he, he advised that person. Believe in Allah, the mustaqam. Call him, amantu billah, the mustaqim. It's not just the belief. Have the belief in Allah, but then stay on the path. Try to stay straight. If we ask for it all the time, it's the ha of Surah Al-Fatiha. After you praised Allah, you, you mentioned His power over you, you mentioned all of His characteristics that He's pleased with, right? Then what do you want? The first thing you ask for, it's the Surah Al-Fatiha. You ask, Allah, put me on the straight path. Then Allah describes to you what that path is. The path of those people who are righteous. Humble, sincere, and righteous actors. That cannot be achieved without knowledge. It is the companion during loneliness. Ya Allah. It is the companion during loneliness. Now I want to reflect upon this uh, thing. A person who has knowledge, or the person, this specifically I want to focus on one thing. A person who takes the Quran as a companion, he can never be lonely. Allah will be with him when the people have abandoned him. I've experienced this effect in my life, but I would advise anyone, if you feel that you're suffering from a broken heart, speak to Allah. Ya Jabal Ajbur Kasri, right? Oh, oh, oh Allah, the one who heals and melts the heart, mend my broken heart and recite the Quran. You will find within there, honestly, even if you just open up, it's permissible, open up and recite whatever you find upon the pages, you will find guidance <coughs> to show you whatever is the solution to your problem. And as Allah, He gives a promise. Perfect. Whoever has suffered by Allah, Allah will make an exit for him. Imagine, you know, you have those scenes in films, right, where someone's trapped and they've got the, the thing coming towards him. Allah will make a way and enter out for you. Some door will open out for you. And He will provide for him in a manner that he could not imagine. We have that situation, right? We have that situation where your debts can overcome you, your business is going badly, maybe your work, you feel that that's it, you're going to, have to everything's going to drown, you're going to lose everything, and then things turn around. We've seen it many times before. 
Uh, I heard an advice from a scholar, and it's a very true thing. He said, look, there's two um, professions. People who do these, they understand what it means that Allah is al and how he provides for the people. People who work in agriculture and farming, and people who work in business. Because you don't have a set amount at the end of each day. And subhanAllah, I remember this brother, he gave me this example. It was an island, and, I, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a younger brother of a very famous scholar in the stories. And he gave me an example, he said, look, that week, the business was running so badly. He was running a shop at that time. He just moved to the country. It was so bad, I was going to have to close the doors. I thought, let me just keep it open half an hour later. So that day, someone came in, and he bought so much stock that I had the month's rent covered. And from that day, everything was stable. He opened up the doors. Had I not kept it up that half hour and just, you know, thought, Ya Allah, look, just let me be patient. Something will come. My whole business would have folded. I would have been massive amounts of debt. He, he saw that as a practical example. When people see they plant the seeds, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes the rain to fall, and uh, the vegetation to come forth, they have that to walk with Allah. I've seen that. When I travel back to my home country, Pakistan and stuff, you see the people who have not necessarily the most knowledge, but they know practical knowledge, you know what I mean? That they know they place the seeds, but then they put their trust in Allah completely. They have amazing tawakkul of trust in Allah. It's beautiful thing to do. So this is the advice, right? A guide or a companion during loneliness is a friend during estrangement. When the people are far from you, you can be close to it. It's a converser during seclusion. If the mind is active and kept, a, kept alive, the person will feel active and happy. It's a guide in times of ease and in times of difficulty. Now think about this. One of the commandments in the previous uh, scriptures was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ibrahim, where Allah says, Wa ta'adana rabbukum. And remember when your Lord commanded you, la in shakartum. He announced, right? If you're thankful, meaning for what? Your blessings. And sometimes you should be thankful for the tests that come to you. So higher status. We realize that there's a way to be, uh, there's a way to feel closer to Allah. Allah's promise. If you're thankful, I will increase you. And if you turn away or hear, it's full of a hair, means uh, in gratefulness, in gratitude, right? I warn you, my, pain, my punishment is painful. Because for a believer, look, two people can face the same thing. A loss of, a loss of lives, loss of a loved one, loss of finance, loss of uh, status, many things, right? And for a believer, it's patient, and his first statement is Alhamdulillah. Allah, he commanded this for me, he took away this, he took away my loved one, or he took away something I love, maybe a car crash, whatever, right? And you say, Alhamdulillah. That's something good for that person. Think about it, something good for that person. Whereas if the same person, he loses it, and he becomes angry and frustrated at the world, and may now be like, I might even say things against his creator, it becomes a punishment for him. He has the punishment of losing the thing, and he has the punishment of not reacting correctly. Whereas a person blessed with knowledge knows that this is from my Lord, and my Lord is all good. The mindset is shifted. And the blessing in that. A weapon to use against enemies and a quality that is valued by friends. And it's true. One of the best qualities that you can have in a good friend is think about it. When you're in a tough situation, the person you think about calling for good advice, is that not one of the most valuable qualities? You're looking at the person. This person will advise you. Sincere advisor. There's two qualities that you need to have a sincere advice. First things first is obviously knowledge of uh, the expertise in the area. It might be like, for example, I don't know, rent or housing situation. There's one brother I know, he's a surveyor. I'd call him on these issues. But more importantly, before knowing that, I can trust the human being. I know he's a sincere advisor to me. He wouldn't advise me for wrong. It's better to have someone who's not as uh, intelligent or not as knowledgeable, but is sincere, than someone who's very knowledgeable but not sincere. Because you can't trust him. It becomes more of a problem, right? If you think about it. Allah elevates some people by knowledge to the rank of leaders in righteousness who are followed. Their actions are imitated and their opinions are referred to. And these are the scholars of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ gave so many virtues about the ulama of Islam. He gave an example. He said the example or analogy of a scholar or his height over the people is like my height over the least of you. Or the virtue of the moon over the stars. Right? Allah's message is not when went on to mention that the Everything in creation, the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, ask Allah's protection and forgiveness for the student of knowledge and the scholar. In one narration he mentioned the dunya, all these things that we're doing to see, see from them, they're empty, worthless things, right? And everything in the world has a curse upon it except the student of knowledge and his, uh, and his, and, and his teacher. So this, I mean, this is one example. We have many things. Now when it comes to knowledge itself, no doubt, the highest and the most virtuous of knowledge is the knowledge that lasts forever. Knowledge of the oneness of Allah and his power and the commandments of the Sharia. We know this, right? But then, does that mean that knowledge in itself is restricted to affairs of the Akhir or no? I'll give you an example, right? It is obligatory from amongst the people, just like it is obligatory to have scholars to have doctors and lawyers. If no one was there to cure the people or to do obstetrics and all these kind of things or whatever specific things, 
than the people with the eye. And preserving life is from the objectives of the Sharia. So the person who seeks that knowledge is also fulfilling when he comes out of this. So when he sits down to study his medical textbooks as the engineer who's creating roads for the people, creating water or paths for the people, he has the same rule, no doubt. Because we don't think, or we don't break knowledge into, oh, knowledge that is worth, worthy of Akhira or Tony. No. The scholars of Islam, they break knowledge into knowledge that is essential for every Muslim and knowledge that some of the community must have. And obviously there are knowledges that are prohibited as well without going into the detail, how to harm the people and all these kind of things, right? So their knowledge has its packages. The angels long to attend the gatherings of knowledge, and they shade them with their wings. Everything wet and rise, as mentioned before. The fish in the sea and the creatures of the sea, the beasts of prey upon the land, and the cattle live upon it, make dua to Allah to forgive them, meaning Ahlul Ilm, the people of knowledge. Indeed, this is because it, knowledge, is the light of the hearts against ignorance and the lamp of the eyes against darkness. With knowledge, the slave reaches the ranks of the righteous and the elevated grades in his life and the next. Thinking and reflecting about knowledge is like fasting, and studying it is like standing in the night to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praying. Qiyam. With knowledge, ties of kinship are kept and the halal and the haram become made clear or distinguished for the people. It is the leader of all actions. We must know what we're doing before we do it, and by it, all actions will follow its lead. Only those who are blessed and happy are endowed with knowledge, while the miserable are those who are truly deprived from it. وَلَاكَنَ دَعْوَانَا لِلْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ Bismillah. Just for the uh, brothers and sisters who came in late, the topic of the khutbah was the Prophet Nassim's advice on knowledge. The report for those who are interested is in Hilyat al Awliya or Al Jami' al Bayan Fadl al right? Uh, Ibn Abdul Bar. The summary of the khalas of what the Prophet was advising to is all virtues are contained by first knowing what you're doing and then doing it righteously. True knowledge is what? Contained in any acceptance for action. The scholars of Islam, they mention something very clear. For any act to be accepted in Islam, two conditions are required. The act must be according to the sunnah, and the heart must be sincere in doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those people who hear the call and follow that which is best and easiest from it. Or Allah bless us with being people who can learn the, the, the knowledge that is benefiting us in dunya and akhirah, spread it and act upon it. Oh Allah, what you have blessed us with of knowledge, don't make it a burden against us and make it easy for us to raise ourselves in knowledge and towards knowledge. Oh Allah, make us people who support the deen with our statements, with our words, with our wealth, with our teaching, with all of the things that we have and to sacrifice in Allah. Make it easy for us. Oh Allah, bless our children and our youth to be uh, raised, with, raised upon Iman, protected from the evils and the harms of this world and this dunya, and to die upon La ilaha Allah, and let us die upon La ilaha Allah. Oh Allah, those are people who you, whom we love, that you've taken from us, make their graves uh, gardens from the gardens of paradise, and not and raise from them any punishments, but give them the sins that they have had, and give them a place better than the place, and a family better than their family, until you reunite us with them. Oh Allah, wherever there are people suffering, and the weak and the destitute of the earth, oh Allah, let us uh, be away to be, Send for them away for, the, uh, for an exit from their harm and an ease towards goodness and righteousness. Oh Allah, give us the tawfiq to establish iman in this place of ours. Bless this, bless this town, bless the people of this town, bless their children and their children's children. Oh Allah, wherever there are people struggling in your path, oh Allah, be for them a support and an aid against their enemies and give them victory. Oh Allah, have mercy upon this ummah and unite us under a righteous khilafah and return us to a place of honor and dignity after we have taken ourselves into a place of uh, indignity and difference. O oh Allah, send your copious prayers upon our beloved Muhammad alayhi salatu salam and upon all of the messengers of the righteous and give us a tawfiq to have our salah accepted, our righteousness accepted and forgive us all of our sins. O oh Allah, if there's anyone struggling in any difficulty, in sickness, spiritual, physical, mental, anything, O oh Allah, remove it for them and bless them and their families. If anyone has having any difficulty in their families and their loved ones, Raise it for them and show us a way to exit from our difficulties. You are our helper, you are our guide in times of difficulty and knowledge. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar.